What is read mapping? Well, in most cases, you're going to get tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of reads off of a sequencer. And we need a rapid and accurate way to find out where in the genome those reads originated from. And this is independent of whether or not you're doing DNA or RNA sequencing. This video will introduce you to how aligners work and the various steps necessary to begin read aligning. But first, I want to note that in most cases, your sequencing data will be in the form of nucleotide space. That is to say that your reads consist of A, T, Gs, and Cs. Type, these types of reads would occur from Illumina, Roche 454, and PAC5 sequencing. However, there's another type of sequencing space called color space, where the reads consist of 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s, and this would occur when sequencing with the ABI solid platform. Several programs exist to rapidly align millions of reads to whole genomes. Video 2 will discuss how to run Bowtie, while Video 3 will discuss how to run BWA. Before running either of these aligners, you must first reference the, you must first index the reference genome, and this is necessary in order to compress the genome into an easily searchable format for the aligner. And in most cases, this will consist of a burroughs wheeler transformation. And to understand why this is necessary, I'm going to give a very basic overview of how read alignment occurs without going into any details about algorithms or anything like that. So the way Bowtie and BWA will align reads is using this seed-based alignment in which you have a read. And the five prime end of the read will be designated as a seed region. And you can typically dictate the length of this region in the mapping program. The liner will then use the seed region to find a location in the genome for which to begin alignment. And then it extends this alignment to find where your read will most likely be mapping to. And this is general seed alignment and extension format for mapping. Now, as I said before, you will have to index your reference genome. And we're going to go over how to do that for both Bowtie and BWA. So for Bowtie or Bowtie 2, the command is Bowtie build or Bowtie 2 dash build. And the general command line setup is as shown here, where we have where we have our command, and then followed by any options, as well as the reference genome in the FASTA format, and then a name that we will give to, to name our index. And you can have it simply be the genome name. Now, for running Bowtie Build, you don't have to really worry about changing any options. In most cases, the default parameters will be sufficient. So following this format, your command line would then look as I'm showing here. Now again, using either Bowtie or BWA will map your reads to a reference genome. And what you get out of that mapping will then be an alignment file, which you should always specify as being a, a SAM file. So we're going to talk about a SAM file a little bit. This is an example of a SAM file. It's human readable, although everything kind of exists in, in a code of some sort. So the file is broken down into three general sections if you use default settings for the SAM file formatting. The first part is your header section which will contain um, chromosome information, like the chromosome name and its length, and it'll have everything listed there. Uh, this is followed by the header showing what um, the command line was for the alignment program. 
So in this case, it's showing me my bow tie um, command line that I used to generate these alignments. And this can be really useful in case you didn't write it down or something. There you have it. And then the last part is all of the alignments. So each line consists of a single alignment. And the first part here would be the read name, followed by the SAM flag, the chromosome that the read maps to, the start coordinate for read mapping, and then various other parameters about the alignment. Now, SAM files can be rather large. And in most cases, you're going to need to convert your SAM file to a BAM file. Now, a BAM file is a binary version of a SAM file and is not human readable, but it is compressed and it is interpretable by various programs. So we use the SAM tools suite of scripts to convert a SAM file to a BAM file, as well as sort the BAM file, and in a number of cases, you will also have to index the BAM file. So following these three command lines here will convert your SAM file all the way to this BAM file index. So we first use SAM tools view with the dash lowercase b and capital S options, followed by our SAM file and then the output file name for our BAM file. We can then take this BAM file generated here and run SAM tools sort, provide the BAM file name and the sorted BAM file prefix name, which I typically just have as file.sorted, and it will output a the file file.sorted.bam. Then lastly, to index this sorted BAM file, we use SAM tools index and then list the sorted BAM file and this will automatically generate a file.sorted.bam.bai. So now I'd like to take a moment to discuss why we would map reads. So whether you have performed RNA sequencing, chip seq, rip seq, ribosomal profiling, or many of the other uh, sequencing protocols that are out there, the general question that we're trying to get at is how many reads map to a given location in order to quantify read abundance for particular locations in the genome. You will need to think about what question is you're asking with your experiment in order to determine the best parameters for running mapping programs. Video two and three will discuss how to use Bowtie and BWA respectively, and we'll discuss a few of the different parameters for customizing alignment, but there are many other options that you can use, and oftentimes you will have to experiment with picking the right options. But Ultimately, you have to think about what it is that you're trying to ask with your sequencing experiment.